Well, it starts with the broad context of climate change. So there's a, a, a definite need for reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. Clean energy is one of the principal mechanisms in order to do that, principally in power, but also clean energy spans this breadth, including biofuels, uh, as well as biomass uh, um, going into it. And then some people's definition also includes energy efficiency as well, which is the efficient use of energy. All of that puts a basis forward for development, i.e. the provision of energy for a GDP growth and economic prosperity, and doing that in a low carbon way. Maybe more importantly, you can do it in a way that's climate resilient if it's well designed, so that you, uh, you include the adaptation components of, uh, of climate in the development of the clean energy future. Interestingly, over the last few years, in fact, nearly the last decade, uh, clean energy, in particular clean electricity, has captured nearly 50% of the global market in new power generation. It's a fact that few people know. It's about $300 billion a year in new, in new investment, and it's projected to grow even further from there. It's really a four-part uh, what I call legs to the table. So typically you'd think of three parts of the stool. You did economics, policy, and innovation. I throw another one in there, which is not so much technical innovation, but it's business model innovation. So I see four elements. You have to have the enabling policy environment. So that attracts entrepreneurs, it attracts investors. You then have to have the technical solutions, which is not just technology, but it's technology along with uh, software along with financing capability, et cetera. You then have to bring the financing to bear. And then the business model piece actually is where we've seen a lot of innovation in the last particularly five years where you've got young entrepreneurs who are internet savvy, who are putting IT enabled payment systems in place or control systems or um, operating systems so that they can monitor how well the, the, the technology is doing and providing services to, to people. All of that package comes together and creates this ecosystem for success. The most creative models are in developing countries. Here you see the breadth of everything from uh, an innovative uh, solar home system which 20 years ago used to be 50 watt panel with an incandescent bulb and maybe a repurposed auto battery to today maybe a five or a 10 watt system, so it's very small, with lithium ion batteries, an internet enabled uh, charging and, and control device because then you can pay over your cell phone and then LED lights and maybe a USB uh, charging outlet for your cell phone and other things like that. So it's the whole system and the solution, the provision of modern energy services, which really is what people care about. They care about lighting, they care about their, their communications, uh, they actually care about clean water, et cetera, which all also come with power. All of that is evolving as the technology evolves and the financing makes it more, more affordable. Well, energy, while it was uh, not explicit in the MDGs, was and is absolutely necessary for the achievement of any of them. And so we see kind of from a different picture that energy is really an enabler or the enabler of much of the development goals, if not all of the development goals, and to do it clean and climate resilient is actually critical going forward. So it's kind of a natural marriage of the technology innovation and the finance and understanding what's happening on, I'll call it on the sector specific part of what we do in clean energy and the broader mission of wider in terms of understanding the economics for, for development. 